Welcome, everybody, to our spooky Halloween <laughs> special. My name is Ranger Carl. I am Ranger Allie. And I am Ranger Tom. And tonight you're going to be joining us for a couple of our eerie tales around the campfire. But first, of course, the whole point of these broadcasts is to bring you the latest updates on what our leaves are looking like. It would be scary if you forgot to do that. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> it's happened before. <laughs> but, dare I say, I think it's peak. I think I have to agree. I, uh, you know, we were up in the park last week, spoke with several visitors, and a lot of them guessed right. I think mm -hmm. that peak is here, and you can tell it's a peak experience because of all of the people here trying to get in to see mm -hmm. all of those beautiful fall colors all throughout the park. Absolutely, and of course, uh, some of the leaves maybe have fallen off with the wind, but for the most part, you're going to be hard pressed to find a tree that's not fully flushed with the fall foliage color. So it is absolutely gorgeous on the mountain and, and really all throughout the surrounding valley. Yeah, and um, social media, did you all see our video that we shared um, on Facebook and Instagram? It was a one minute video of the traffic backed up uh, leading into Thornton Gap entrance station. It was just it was a lot of cars. Yeah. <laughs> Thoughts on that, Tom? <laughs> there were a ton of them. Oh man, yeah, I was in Front Royal that day and same thing there, a ton of cars. So maybe you could try the south uh, entrance. You should try the southern entrances actually. Um, if you can't be here during the week, if you come on the weekend, definitely go south to Swift Run or to Rockfish Gap entrance. That's gonna be the best way to get into the park as quick as you can if you avoid the two northern entrance stations. 100%. And either way, however you get into the park, make sure you're looking at getting your passes ready ahead of time. If you have your uh, annual passes, have them out before you get to the entrance station just to help everything go more smoothly for you and for the rangers working there. Yeah. So we were supposed to have one more person here, right? Yeah, I don't know where <laughs> we go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Luca? Oh, Tom. Is that you, Allie. Luca? Luca. Carl, do you want to What happened? Do you want to have a phone charger? I'm not, a, not on me. Do you want to have a phone charger? Uh, Carl. No. Fresh, Carl, do you have a phone charger? No. Nope. What no happened phone. to you? Oh, gosh. One, Luca, one you're late. Here, <laughs> you're like three hours late, man. Guys. Dude, you Guys, didn't even phone, call us. <laughs> my phone died. My phone died. I was out in the park. I was taking pictures. And I just said, I need a second. I just need a second. All right, take, I take a second. it. I Wait, we have got to hear yeah. this. What uh, in the world? I gotta put my uniform on here. I gotta put <laughs> my hat on. Tell us there. about it. Uh, let me tell you about it, Carl. <laughs> let me tell you all at home about it. It was a bright and sunny fall evening. I was out on Pass Mountain taking some photos on my phone. The colors were so pretty, I just couldn't stop clicking away. I wasn't gonna let any visitors or bumps in the trail ruin my photo taking experience. When I finally got to the end of my hike on top of a nice boulder, I couldn't wait to live stream my hike to all my followers. But then I realized I had no reception. I couldn't believe it. I tried calling everyone I knew, but I didn't have any cell phone service. What was the point of going out in the woods if I couldn't show everyone on social media that I was there? In a frenzy, I ran through the trail looking for some precious bars of cell service. I couldn't use the map on my phone, so I got lost really easily. I thought I could just order some food for delivery out on the trail, but I still didn't have any connection, so I got real hungry. Then it happened. My phone died. <gasps> no map, no food, no flashlight, and worst of all, no camera. I was starving. Tired, lost, and I almost gave up all hope. 
At least my phone made a nice comfortable pillow when I took a nap on a boulder. It's been days since then, and it's all been a blur. I just kept crawling and crawling, and then I saw this bonfire. If you're watching at home, don't be like me. Don't rely fully on your phone. Get a map, bring your own snacks, bring a camera, and if it's later in the day, bring a flashlight as well. Because if your phone dies, you're toast. And you're not gonna have any cell service either, so just don't rely on that. Yeah, that's my story. <laughs> well, Luca, I feel I like we all learned. To you. <laughs> it was so crazy. It I was feel so like we crazy. We all learned something from that. Yeah. yeah. Well, no. <laughs> Expand on that. <laughs> no, I learned a lot, Luca. Thank you okay. for going through that yeah. to uh, really educate us and the people watching. I did it for you. I did it for you all. Oh my gosh. A lot of people don't realize that just because there's towns nearby, you're not going to have that cell service. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Well, that was a crazy story, Luca. But since it's fall, I also have a crazy story to tell about a visitor that didn't plan ahead when they were coming into the park. In the fall, days in Shenandoah seem to slip away fast, especially when you're driving along Skyline Drive. Our visitor was distracted by the golden leaves and the sweeping views and lost track of time. Before they knew it, the sun had set and the long shadows turned to darkness. They arrived to an empty parking lot and just the illumination of street lamps. The place looked empty, but they knocked on the door no one answered. And then when they pulled on the door, they realized it was unlocked. They stepped inside, looked around, and saw black, beady eyes staring back at them. But it was just the taxidermied animals. When they finally looked around and explored it a bit more, they found a flashlight. They grabbed the flashlight and headed into the exhibit. Going through the exhibit, no lights were on. The only thing they could see was two feet ahead of them with the flashlight shining on the ground. When they turn corners, they began to get an uneasy feeling. At one moment, they shined the flashlight and saw something move. And then they kept going down through the exhibit hall and shined their flashlight in front of them. All of a sudden, a figure darts out. There's only one way out, and they keep going forward. Finally, they make it out into the dimly lit main hall of Bird Visitor Center. They're looking around, wondering who's in here. And then all of a sudden, a park ranger <gasps> pops out behind the desk and says, we're closed. And it freaks them out, and then you know, they kick them out. You can't be in the visitor center after dark. Mm -mm. You, you have to plan ahead, people. Mm -mm. Make sure that the bird visitor center or any visitor center in the park is open when you arrive so we can help you get the best experience in Shenandoah National Park. Man, that just goes to show, you know, some people don't do their research before they arrive, which is fine. You know, I get the spur of the moment excitement, but it really does help if you do that, that bit of research on the website, kind of figure out what you want to do, where you want to go. Right, yeah. And how to do it responsibly. Yeah. My story very much is involved in 
the recreating responsibly aspect of our website and some I stumbled across an area where people had not cleaned up their trash and that put me in such a scary situation it still haunts me to this day but I'm gonna share it tonight do tell yeah please so there I was I was hiking in the park when I decided I was gonna have a picnic I walked around I looked for a great location and when I finally found the perfect one, there was trash everywhere. First, I checked for bears or other signs of wildlife. And then I heard it. black shadow in the woods was getting closer and closer and closer. Before I knew it, a wild animal was charging me. I was fighting for my life. I didn't know what was on top of me. And then I felt slobber. And it was actually an unleashed dog. And all it wanted was the food that was left behind at the picnic area. But how was I to know? I thought that it could have been a bear coming after me. So I just want everyone to know that dogs and other pets are supposed to be on a leash no longer than six feet. And please store your food properly so someone else does not have the same experience I did. Luckily, I made it out alive. Yeah. Thanks. Sorry you have to go yeah. through such a intense event. Yeah. Thank Where you. was its owner? I don't know. Yeah. It I hadn't had an owner for yeah. 50 years. <laughs> Whoa, that's an old dog. <laughs> Poor dog. <laughs> Poor dog. Well, you know, I had a spooky experience oh. this season, too. Much like any other weekend in the park, I decided to go out on a hike deep into the forest. Hmm. Now, it's a busy time of year, so I'm used to a lot of foot traffic along the trails, but this time I was fortunate. I neither saw nor heard a soul. until a rustle and faint chitter wafted through the leaves at my side. I figured, must be a squirrel. This is a national park after all, and I walked on. Deeper into the woods, the canopy dimmed around me. Again, something rustled and chittered in the leaf litter, this time close enough to seemingly nip at my heels. Despite the falling autumn leaves, I'd found myself now among evergreens, hemlocks, some of the most ancient trees of the mountain. I whirled around in the dusk of the trees, and to my horror, the hemlock branches are coated in what appears to be fallen snow. <gasps> but it's not snow. It's the hemlock woolly adelgid. <gasps> not the invasive aphid-like insect that attacks North American hemlocks identifiable by the white woolly masses they form on the evergreen needles. Yes, Alyssa, one and the same. <laughs> So I tore off down the trail, vines and brambles clawed at my clothes. 
I ran up to an oak tree to rest, but upon which I spied a bundle of spongy moth caterpillars. As I attempted to escape the mayhem, something caught my foot and I fell. It was the vine of the swiftly growing oriental bittersweet. Indeed, my fate was sealed. I rolled to my back, hoping to take in the sunshine one last time, but its warming rays were blotted out, completely choked by the canopy of the invasive shrub, Tree of Heaven. And from the shoots and leaves emitted the bone-chilling chittering I'd been hearing all hike, the spotted lanternfly. I first entered the forest, perhaps an invasive species in my own right, in hopes of taking in the beauty. But now it seemed that the forest was taking me, and it wasn't letting go. Wow. You know, if it weren't for our amazing invasives plant and veg crew, I, I don't know how Carl would have ever escaped such a harrowing tale like that. That is true. That is true. Well, I'm thoroughly scared. <laughs> I'm scared, but also more educated about the park than I was before this broadcast. Frightfully yeah. educated. So remember, if you're ever coming to Shenandoah National Park, make sure you don't fully rely on your phone, have a physical map with you, have a flashlight, have some snacks, and plan to not always have reception. It's very important. And be informed. Make sure you know the closing hours, the operating hours, and what the conditions of the drive are. And leave it better than you found it. Properly store your food and keep all pets on a leash. And make sure that you don't bring in any outside wood from the park or into the park so as to not transport any more invasive pests. Always make sure you check your hiking boots if you are traveling from one part of the country to the next. And if you see a spotted lanternfly, <laughs> squash it. <laughs> Happy Halloween from all of us at Shenandoah National Park. All right, let's go make some s'mores. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you all look scared. I'm laughing. <laughs> you guys, Luca! Luca, Luca you no! don't have extra batteries! <laughs> well, maybe next year. Yeah. <laughs>